Hey, what's up everybody? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and it's time for another hard rock and heavy metal update. Uh, this one will mostly be heavy metal. I can't remember if there's any hard rock in here or not. Uh, in the next week or two, I'll be doing a, uh, a 70s hard and heavy video because I got a bunch of really cool um, and uh, a few rare uh, 70s hard rock albums I wanted to share. So, um, But let's uh, just kind of jump into... Uh, what we got here. Like I said, I guess there is some hard rock there. It is a pretty good mix though. Um, so we're gonna start off, this one, I don't remember if I showed this or not. This is VCLT that I got a while back um, from Eric Dust. Uh, he knows I'm a huge fan of this band and I was really psyched to get this. But this is the, uh, now what do they call it? The, the Combined Surgical Remission and Surplus Steel EPs uh, from Carcass. Um, those were actually released as uh, separate EPs. The first one was Surgical Remission. Uh, I'm sorry, maybe that one. Yeah, the first one was Surgical Remission and the second was Surplus Steel. Um, one was a two song uh, EP and the second was a third, so a three song um, EP. But uh, just killer melodic death metal. I I've liked everything um, from Cannibal, Cor um, Cannibal Corpse. Oh my god. Um, everything from Carcass. Uh, I got into them in their early, uh, on their second album when they were still a grind band. Um, and I liked them then. Uh, but then when Necroticism came out, uh, which was uh, more of their crossover album where they entered into the kind of melodic death while still being a little bit of a grind band. And I've talked about that uh, a bunch of times before. Um, so I'm not going to get into that. But uh, just a, a killer 10 inch. And I was really happy to get those two, uh, those two EPs, and kind of a, a tribute to one of my all-time favorite album covers. But just an awesome, awesome gatefold. Um, that would be an awesome poster too, right there. I actually wish they would have used that as the album cover for this. Although um, the album cover is still kind of cool there, but a little bit of carcass. Um, next up, this is just an upgrade. Um, ended up giving it three or four spins. Um, just a, a killer album. I think it was Joe Lynn Turner was on vocals on this one. Yeah, this was Joe Lynn Turner. But this is, uh, what is this one? Difficult to Cure uh, from Rainbow. This one was early 80s, I think 82, uh, 81. You know, and I, I've talked to a lot of people that don't like the Joe Lynn Turner era um, Rainbow, which I, I've never got. Uh, love his vocals and uh, just a great album. Next up, this is a really cool one um, that I found at a half price books, oh, maybe three or four months ago. And I thought it was some, this is a rare album, but I thought it was something even rarer when I first saw it. Uh, what this is is Buster Brown, and it's called Loud and Clear. Unfortunately, there's a little uh, tear right there. Otherwise, it's in excellent condition. Um, the vinyl's near mint. So when I first picked it up, I saw the name Buster Brown, and I saw that it was an Australian. Um, it was printed in Australia. And the first thing that came to mind, it, and once I read into it, I, once I paid attention, I knew it wasn't them. But, uh, so the ACDC guys, uh, Phil Rudd and, uh, I don't remember who else. There was, there were a couple other bands. Um, but members of those bands were in a band called Buster Brown in Australia. So when I fall, saw, first saw Buster Brown, I thought this was one of the albums that I just, I, I didn't know what the album covers looked like. Um, so I ended up looking on the back, and obviously it's not. You know, you got Kevin Downs, Johnny Edwards, Alan Phelps, and uh, Rob uh, Coastal, 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 whatever. Um, there's the guys. This is still killer um, hard rock, early era metal. Uh, when was this? 80? It was early 80s. This was a private press. On Sleeping Giant Records, 84. Really good album, though. One I highly recommend checking out.
It was listed as glam metal, and I wouldn't go as far as to call it glam, but I would definitely call it uh, uh, that that uh, early 80s, uh, late 70s, early 80s style heavy metal uh, and hard rock. Really good, though. And members of this would go on to be in, uh, oh my God, I know King Cobra. Uh, they went on to be in three or four other bands uh, after leaving this band, so... Uh, you know, they ended up uh, having pr pretty successful careers among them, although that didn't really take off. Uh, if you run across that album, though, I highly recommend grabbing it. Uh, some good stuff. Uh, next up, uh, I've shown the CD of this. I've talked about this a couple times. This is the Grinding Wheel. From Overkill. I believe this one, let's see. Is on orange vinyl. I don't remember. Yeah, orange vinyl. So, the first couple listens, I really liked this album. I don't know. It, I'm, I'll listen to it one time and I'm feeling it. And then the next time I listen to it, I'm not. Um, I do think it's better than White Devil Armory, but that's not saying a lot because I wasn't a big fan of that album. Um, it's good metal. Um, I... They're good albums, their last two, this one and White Devil Armory. Um, it just doesn't compare to their earlier stuff. Um, even the stuff they were doing five or six years ago, um, I like better than this. Uh, whereas uh, bands like Accept, and uh, Accept especially, but Accept, Testament Anthrax are putting out uh, some amazing albums. Um, I unfortunately think Overkill is uh, kind of falling off a little bit. Um, still a good album. Um, if you're an Overkill fan, I still recommend you buy it. Um, and they do do a great cover of Emerald on here from Thin Lizzy. Uh, that's my favorite track on here, though, unfortunately, is the cover. But, uh, like I said, if you're a fan of Thin, uh, Thin Lizzy, uh, if you're a fan of Overkill, um, you're going to like the album. Um, it just doesn't compare uh, to their, their other stuff. And, and the more I listen to it, the more I feel that way, unfortunately. So... Um, so this one, I would not have bought this, um, if not for, for one track on here, and it's an okay album, um, this is Undeniable from Hell Yeah, I ended up getting it for, I don't know, like $9 or $10 sealed, can't remember what the vinyl is, it's on white white vinyl um so I kind of dug hell yeah when they first came out if you're not familiar with hell yeah you've got uh, Vinnie Paul from Pantera on drums um, and I can't think of the singer's name you've got the singer um, from Mudvayne and I was a fan of Mudvayne uh, back when they came out I like their first uh, their first two albums but uh, the main reason I bought this is because they were talking about doing a song and it was a cover. I don't remember which one it was. I don't remember which song it is on here. Um, but it was a cover that, uh, that Vinnie Paul and Dimebag did with Damage Plan that was never released. Um, so they basically took the guitar from Dimebag from when he was in Damage Plan and recorded the song using the Dimebag's riff. So there's a song on here with Dimebag on it. And that is the main reason that I ended up buying this. And that's, it's okay. Um, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a okay album. If you like that, if you like Hell Yeah, um, you're going to like it. Um, like I said, I like their first album and I just kind of lost interest after that. I, I'll probably won't play that again other than the, you know, if, if uh, I run into a, a good friend that's into Dimebag, I might say, hey, hey check out this Dimebag track. But uh, that's about it. Um, this is an album that I wanted forever. And the prices got kind of crazy and Music on Vinyl finally repressed it. Um, I love this album. A lot of people call this thrash. There are some thrash elements to it. Um, but you start to hear uh, a little bit of what to expect in the future from the artist as well. Uh, and this is uh, Carnivore. I believe this is their debut. They did one more full length after this. 
uh, before the band split. And I see did some EPs and stuff as well. Um, but I, I've always wanted this. Um, I had it on tape at one time. Um, I'm a huge Peter Steele fan. He's just always blown me away. He had the most amazing voice. And he was just a great guy. If you ever saw interviews with him or uh, um, hear stories about people that have met him, um, they've always talked about what a great guy he was. But there is a lot of thrash in here. Uh, and you still hear a little bit of the hardcore from his earlier uh, his earlier band as well. And I can't think of the name of that band. Uh, but on side B, you kind of hear that, uh, that gothic doominess that you would later hear in Typo Negative as well. Uh, and just it's just a solid out from beginning to end. It's a really fun listen. Um, and again, I'm really glad to finally have this one on vinyl. Next up, this is one of my favorites of the year. Uh, this is a band that Scott turned me on to, I don't know, about a year and a half ago. It's a band that I, I had known about. Um, but I was kind of staying away from the newer, the, 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 the Neo Thrash bands. Because most of them, honestly, they, they kind of bored me. Um, they're more about, uh, what do you got, like Cannabis Corpse. And, uh, you know, it's all party, about drinking and partying and, and blah, 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 whatever. That stuff bores me. Um, I've always liked the more political style of thrash, uh, the more punk driven style of thrash um, that all of our favorite bands had back in the 80s, you know. Um, and this band uh, is kind of like the modern day version of that. And I've talked about them before when I, when I went over the rest of their discography, but this is a conform aside from Havoc. And uh, with this album, you know, with their their first few albums, you really heard early Testament in there. You really heard early Metallica in there. You really heard early Exodus in there. And with this album, I, I really feel like they're coming into their own sound. Um, and, and and even though they sounded like those other bands in the earlier albums, they're still phenomenal. I highly recommend picking up everything from this band. They haven't released a bad song. And they always throw in some killer covers, too. But... Uh, Man, they, they kill it with this album. Uh, one of my favorite tracks on here is probably Hang 'em High. Uh, and I did a pre order, um, I think it was Pledge Music that I did this one through. Uh, and and it, can, it came signed from the band. And then this one, I think you can only get this color through Pledge Music, but this is the, the Coke Bottle Clear. I think they did like a yellow and a purple as well as the regular black but uh man i highly recommend if you like thrash you're gonna love this album this is one that i definitely recommend everybody grabs and then speaking of overkill just one of their early masterpieces i, I showed this in a in a best of thrash type of video i did um i think i did a video called i think it was 10 perfect thrash albums uh, and I talked about this when this had just come out on vinyl for the first time. But this is a uh, horror scope from Overkill. This is kind of a turning point for the band. Uh, and a lot of people didn't like this album. I, I, I just remember somebody talking about not liking this album the other day. Um, I've loved this album since it came out. I do love their early stuff too. You know, I wasn't disappointed by this like a lot of people were. But uh, just beginning to end, I've always thought this was a, an amazing album. Um, and, and get this while you can. Uh, this is a really killer pressing that Rhino did. Uh, and it's really nice to have this on vinyl finally. Uh, next up, a, a couple of singles. Um, this is one uh, that I've just never run across in good condition. I found a nice mint copy. Um, the vinyl anyway. The, the, the jacket's uh, got a little bit of wear. But this is uh, Reach Out from Striper, uh, and it's uh, two songs in an interview, but you've got Reach Out together as one, and then an interview with the, with the Sweet Brothers. Next up, another one that I've wanted for a long time, um, a big 10-inch record from Aerosmith, and it's got uh, Rats in the Cellar uh, from Rocks, and then uh, Lord of the Thighs Live, a seven-minute version. But... Uh, killer little 10 inch i've been looking for this forever i found it a couple times it's always trashed and i ended up finding this for like three bucks at uh i don't remember if it was half price books or if it was second charles but one of those 
Um, another one, uh, you guys know that I'm a huge Judas Priest fan. Um, I have never found a nice original pressing of this in good condition. Um, and I was really stoked to finally find this. And I found it for like 12 bucks. But this is uh, the, uh, the Coke bottle cap uh, version of uh, Rock -a Rolla. And I love this album. A lot of people don't like it. Yes, it doesn't sound like the Judas Priest um, that we would come to know and love. Um, but there's a lot of Black Sabbath. Um, there's a lot of Uriah Heap in here. Um, and that's all stuff that I love. And uh, it's just a great album. Actually, I have a, a, a cassette, a CD copy of this that stays in my 73 Oldsmobile when we're out doing cruises and stuff. This is one of my favorite albums um, to play. I should have saved that one for the 70s hard and heavy, but oh well. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, I think these are the last two. Um, this one is uh, by a band called Hellwell. This is Beyond the Boundaries of Sin. This was released by High Roller Records. So Hellwell, uh, the name came from the, the, the keyboardist. His name is E.C. Hellwell. And he came up with this story um, called, what is it, Acronomicon. Uh, the guy's a friend of Mark Sheldon from uh, Manila Road. And uh, Mark basically said, let's turn that story into an album. Uh, so the A side, uh, you have a few songs. And then the B side is actually th that story. Uh, is it? I, I think it's Acura Um Kind of a progressive doom uh, type of album. The A side doesn't do much for me. I, I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I do like the B side, which is the part that comes from the story. Um, as with a lot of the high roller, you got a poster. I'm not going to open it, but a poster of the album cover. Uh, but the cool thing is they did this really cool book. Excuse me, and this is actually the short story um, that E.C. Hellwell wrote. So, and they put it on this cool-looking uh, parchment-style uh, paper. I haven't read it, but I'm going to. I, I do want to give this a read. Uh, and his actual name is Ernest Cunningham Hellwell. Um, so it's probably good they stuck with Hellwell. Um, Hellwell just put out a new album too. Um, this is one. If you're a Mark Sheldon fan, I. I probably go ahead and pick it up it's not as good as the manila road stuff but that uh like i said that b-side is, is pretty cool uh, like i said it's more of a progressive doom it's not that epic uh metal that you expect uh from mark sheldon but still pretty cool and the newest album that just came out within the last few months i think it's been getting better reviews uh than this one initially did um but like i said i haven't checked that out yet so and then last but not least, just a, a, an all-time thrash classic. Um, this will probably be on my top 15 uh, thrash albums of all time. This is Possessed by Fire from Exumer. Um, I tried to buy this when it first came out. Uh, when High Roll, excuse me, when High Roller first did this repress, and it sold out really quick here in the U.S. It was hard to find. Only a couple of stores got it, and their copies didn't last that long. Um, so I was really stoked when I was at Second and Charles a couple months ago uh, and ran across this copy. Um, so it comes with a really nice photo and lyric card. And then this one is on this uh, clear red vinyl. Sounds awesome. Um, I, I listened to this a couple times yesterday. Um, this has been in, in my in, uh, pretty heavy in my rotation for the last couple of months. But uh, if you guys have never heard this album, you're really missing out on, on a, an all-time classic. Just uh, an amazing album. Exumer. And then last but not least, uh, in the background, we're listening to uh, Kings and Queens from Axel Rudy Pell. Uh, if you're not familiar with Axel Rudy Pell, he's a uh, kind of a virtuoso guitarist, kind of in the vein of uh, Yngwie Malmsteen, or uh, yeah, probably Yngwie Malmsteen is the, the best comparison. Um, Scott uh, Waters kind of said it best. So Axel has all the skill of Yngwie, but he doesn't feel like he has to show off the way Yngwie does. So 
he'll play the virtuoso style guitar when it's needed in the music. Um, and uh, the reason I found out about this band is because uh, Rob Rock, um, who was an Impella Terry, um, oh man, I can't remember. He, he did a bunch of albums himself as Rob Rock. He was in another band earlier as well, uh, more of a mainstream out, uh, band. But uh, he wasn't on this one. They had a new vocalist on here, Johnny Goley. Johnny Gioli, Gioli. Um, the guy sounds phenomenal. You can hear it. And just a really killer album. I highly recommend checking out Axel Rudy Pell if you haven't uh, checked them out yet. Um, that's it, VC. Um, I hope to have something up soon. Take care and uh, enjoy your long weekend.